10 years ago or so, uh, the restaurant was really slow. Like 2007, 2008, the economy's in a hard way. People aren't showing up, right? This place is just feels like a ghost town. We're doing, on a slow night, 20, 30 guests, 40 guests, because we're a big restaurant. That's just, we're losing money. And I got really angry. And I was just like, oh man, we're working so hard. I believe this is still a really good dining experience, you know? Well, who should be introducing yeah, each other? Because I, because I want to save you the, um, you know, it's always a little awkward, right? Because like, what are you going to say? You're going to be like, you're going to, you got to, you got to be positive. You got to be upbeat. You got to be complimentary. And then I'm over here like, okay, but like you're overstating it. Let's just skip all that. Okay. 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 Well, for our listeners that don't know who you are, um, you know what? Why don't you, you just share with us a little bit more about uh, Canlis? Okay. Here we go. You ready? Canlis in 30 seconds. Yes. Let's go. My name is Mark Canlis. I run this restaurant in Seattle with my brother, Brian. He's downstairs texting me saying, where the hell are you? Um, but uh, we're a restaurant in Seattle. Yeah, we just celebrated our 70th birthday um, during a pandemic, uh, like a lot of people celebrated birthdays. Uh, so we've been here a long time. We've been here three generations. My grandfather started this thing in 1950. So we um, were a fine dining place, um, but we haven't been for the last 15 months. We shut this restaurant down March 15th of last year and in the meantime we've just been doing everything we can to keep our employees working and to you know pay the bills and hopefully encourage the city hopefully encourage the nation um and i think do some thinking around how to rebuild an industry that um that's had a really rough go um and so that i think that's our I think that's our charge a little bit um, is just to ask ourselves, okay, how do we, how do we put this thing together? Um, and in the process, can we keep serving, can we keep serving the people that we, that we love to serve, even though we're not a fine dining restaurant. So that's, um, that's what we're up to. I love it because like for actually, I think you're not really describing yourself or giving yourself uh, enough credit because you guys are one of the top fine dining restaurants. I would say, oh, yeah. I didn't say that you're a really good restaurant. How's that? Okay, beautiful. It's a very good restaurant. <laughs> one of the best, I would say. It's definitely one of the best. Um, yes, def it's definitely one of the best. There we go. There you go. Uh, and I, I remember last year when I interviewed you guys, it was just in the, the beginning of the pandemic, and you guys were quick with adapting to the new rules of the game where you guys went from, you know, employing like over 100 people, and you guys were switching to the time of like, hey, you know what, how can I do fine dining with COVID? No, you're not doing it. So now, and then you switched to selling burgers over a hundred, a thousand burgers, uh, yeah. crazy uh, on a switch of a dime. And, and I was like super, super inspirational that that interview that we had because like you guys were not waiting for the new normal. You guys were just like adapting to the rules of the game and you're like, you know what, let's charge ahead, as you said. Um, so now I want to bring you back and see like, hey, now we're a year into the whole COVID. We're about to get out of it um, and basically share with us your recent activities. I know you guys have been doing a ton of things uh let's dive into what do you want to start with i know you guys are you guys are so many great things you know um yeah i think i, I think i think what we i think that that initial pivot like um got a lot of attention and 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 um people were paying attention to it which which was hugely helpful for us um i think maybe i'd like to start with like this like chapter two like what happened after that you know and um, why did we maybe why did we make some of those decisions or, or um, what really is the opportunity that's out there for a restaurant right now or for people right now who are saying oh, I'd love I'd love to I feel like we're turning a corner and yet I'm still I'm still stuck like my company's not open or we're still hamstrung by all these new rules you know what do we so I, I just feel like there's um, we're kind of in this holding period this sort of not yet period we're all ready to um, to kind of get back to to a more normal lifestyle and yet we're not there yet um Camus is still closed and uh even though you know everyone here is getting vaccinated and and um and there's just a different feel in the city there's just a different tenor for sure i don't know if it's because it's sunny in seattle or because people are truly feeling like hey we're entering a new season but we are we're entering in, in many ways a new season um, but the, the fact of the matter is, is we still have to keep playing this game and to, and to, to Canlis, it feels like a game. That's kind of how we've approached it the entire way. It was, okay, um, we're playing this game. We're on the field. We're not the referee. We don't control the rules. We don't get to say how this thing goes. We just need to sort of 
figure it out and adapt and keep playing for as long as we can. Like, how do we just, <laughs> how do we just not, um, we don't want that final whistle to blow. So, um, so that's what we've been up to. Yeah. Right now the restaurant looks like, I think we're in our 13th business model. So, you know, you <laughs> left off at bagels and burgers and takeout and stuff. Um, we've done a few since then. Um, right now we are camp canless. I love okay. that. Camp Canless, is that is that the same as uh, Yurt Village or different? We used, we repurposed the Yurt Village. So the Yurt Village was designed to be like this Swiss chalet kind of apres ski fine dining, you know, wintertime thing. Um, it's 74 degrees and sunny in Seattle right now. So that did that felt a little weird to be, you know, eating raclette. And <laughs> so we kind of had to redo the entire thing. So we stripped it down. Okay, okay, okay. sorry, sorry, sorry. Before we, we, we leave, village because it is something that caught my eye and i'm like holy yeah. crap like this guy is amazing like uh, like first of all for those people that don't know what your village is can you tell us a little bit more about like a what, 10 second pitch of what your village is yeah well if we go back to like last summer so we were running a restaurant in our parking lot called the crab shack it got really smoky because of forest fires we had to kind of shut that thing down and it started raining um so we opened something called canless community college um, which was like a two month idea and tons of fun, but not sustainable long term for us. And we decided to build, let's said, let's build an outside restaurant again. Okay, so I'm, I'm so sorry to, 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 uh, to cut you off right now because I know the Canvas Community College is a gem and it's something that I really want to talk about. Okay, yeah. you're skipping on all the good stuff, the great stuff. Going too fast. All right, I'll, I'll slow. Okay, so step by step, right? So the first outdoor restaurant we did was Crab Shack. And because of weather, we were like, "Now nah, we can't pull that off, right? Seattle is just a is a is a is a wet mess." So, um, and at the same time, our team was really tired. We were having a hard time keeping everyone employed, um, and and we no longer had a, a restaurant. So we thought, "What if we did something for the community that allowed us to sort of take a break from trying to like be in front of all these guests? No one, CDC doesn't know." really how COVID spreads. It was all kind of awkward, you know, in that phase. So we came up with this idea Nelson did, our wine director. He's like, what if we just did, we have this thing called um, Canlis University, which is not a university at all. It's like a two week class we teach in the restaurant. He's like, hey, let's just do that for the city. And which was like a cool idea, except we don't, we're not teachers. <laughs> like we can barely put together two weeks of stuff for our own staff. Um, and we thought, yeah, but we have a platform and there's a lot of teachers here in the city, voices that need to be heard and that could really just shine a light on what's positive about Seattle, even in the midst of the fact that we're all catching this disease and on the struggle bus. And so we went around town and just said, who, who would be cool to listen to and let's invite them in and have a socially distanced cocktail. You know, we set this up in the dining room, we tried to make the cameras look like we were close, but you know, you're sitting. You're sit and we just had conversations like, tell us about, you know, um, the Northwest African American Museum. I don't know anything about that. I had never met the executive director. I don't know anything about black history in Seattle. And it was like, you know what? I'm quarantined, I'm stuck at home. I'm kind of like poopy pants a little bit with the attitude. What a great opportunity to learn. So we sit down with her and we just talk for an hour and say, tell us about your museum. We did that with the Mohai, the Museum of you know Industry here in Seattle. Um, we did that with uh, like so many people. We actually did 48 different classes. Like we brought in different chefs from cuisines that we know nothing about, right? We learned how to make dumplings. Um, and we just thought, what if we're the learners and we bring in these incredible voices around the city and let them be the teachers? And so we called it Canlis Community College. It was like so a, a where, where was this distributed? Oh, we just, we just stuck it on YouTube. Um, and we charged people 25 bucks and to be a student. And that $25 um, was a fundraiser. So we said, hey, after we get our costs paid for like our, my buddy that was the producer and like his, you know, random buddy who was like the sound guy, um, we said, we're just gonna donate this to Fair Start. So it ended up raising a lot of money, 60 grand or 70 grand or something for Fair Start. Um, and it was fun. I mean, Brian and I did like a kid's show for kids. We did, it's, if you YouTube Canlis Community College, it's all out there, but it's... So, um, what's the highlight, right? You're, you're still missing the highlight of this whole college. What? Your most <laughs> notable guests, okay? <laughs> what, uh, so, like, my favorite show, like, my favorite class was uh, I home. think uh, there was a... I was really blown away. What really caught my eye was, like, you, I thought you were joking because you're, you're really great at telling stories. And when you said, like, hey, you know what? Who better to share this than Bill Gates? 
Oh man, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, you're missing. <laughs> well, I mean, we were like, like, how are we gonna tell people that we're doing a community college? This is so like, goofy and like, what the hell? Like we're a restaurant, right? So people were just scratching their heads thinking, I think we were off our rocker. So we decided, a friend of mine, uh, Cal McAllister, he writes advertisements for a living. And he's like, dude, I'm gonna write this thing for you. See if you can get Bill Gates. So he writes this little script and we, um, um, I don't, I'm not friends with him, but you know, he's eating here and stuff. And so we just called and said, Hey, we're kind of hard up. We're this restaurant you've eaten here before. It'd be amazing if you could just deliver this line, <laughs> we're going to fake a commercial, like a YouTube video. And so anyway, in the video, Brian and I are like, Oh, we're on the struggle bus. We don't know what to do. Uh, but we talked to Bill Gates and he told us to open a community. So Gates is totally into education, right? So it's like, he told us to open a community college. And in the video, Bill is sitting there like, I did not tell them to open a community college, right? It's just this dry humor kind of thing. But um, I think the idea of the community college a little bit was to say, was to sort of like circle the wagons and to say, look, this is us, Seattle. Like, this is us. Maybe you run a little school. Maybe you're some chef in a tiny restaurant. Maybe you're Bill Gates. But if we just sort of like come together and say, we can do something cool here. I don't, I don't want to hear the sob story that we're still in a pandemic. Let's create something cool. Let's keep learning. Let's fill our minds with something good. Because if you just focus on the negative all day, you're going to be filled up with the negatives. So it was like, what can we put out there that's positive? And he was amazing. And he, you know, the guy's saving the world right now. He's got way better things to do than deliver a line for our stupid video. But it was cool. It was a lot of fun. And we were all like, you know. I have so bit. many questions. It's insane because I'm like, how, first of all, you feel like yo let's just call him up and you're like okay let's just call bill gates and that's how it goes i think we knew someone who knew someone who knew someone i don't know i can't remember how it happened but i, yeah. I love that now i know someone that knows someone that knows someone that knows someone that knows bill gates <laughs> I think someone who knew someone who knew someone was picking up dinner like we were doing dinner to go and we're like oh wait a second yeah i mean it's seattle's still a small town and here's the thing let me just put credit it's like he's as cool as you want him to be like he's the real deal so when a bunch of podunk restaurant people are like can you help us with our canless community college he's like yeah i mean that's bill gates and i think people don't give him credit for that he he's he's authentic he's a real human <laughs> and he's got a big heart and so and, and honestly you know wilson like for me one of the things that i'm learning in this pandemic is just man if you have the guts to just say hey i need help if you have the guts to say, I, I'm not enough, I can't do it alone right now, um, I could really use a helping hand, like, that really connects to people. <laughs> and and more often than not, they'll be like, here. And I think for me, I'm kind of scared to do that. I'm either scared to admit that I need help, or I'm scared to admit that, like, I can't do it on my own, or embarrassed, as, even, like, you know, asking for directions, all of that's really vulnerable. It's all of it is like, Hey, I, I don't have my stuff quite put together. Could you help me out? And it's hard for me. If I'm really honest, it's really hard for me. I'd like to stand at the front door of a fancy restaurant and look all polished and put together and have you pretend I got my shit together. The reality is, you know, it takes a village to keep this thing running me, my family, my restaurant. And so I think that's what we learned, particularly in community college was it takes a village. And if you're just willing to sort of say, I, I could use a hand here, it's amazing. People just, that's humanity, right? We're all more alike than we, than we want to admit. And there's something about hospitality that has a lot to do with your head going, this doesn't make sense, but your heart going, man, I got to help that guy. So I, I, that's what, I, yeah, the Bill Gates video was a highlight for sure. But the real highlight was seeing the city come together in a way and, and help lift us up, help pick us up and be like, hey, Canlis, this is a kind of a crazy, crazy idea, but we got you. Let's do this. This will be cool. And so, I mean, you know, the content we're putting out there is like C minus quality, right? There's like, there's like good stuff and then there's like all the other stuff. And then there's like what we put out there, which probably isn't worth watching. But in that time and place, I think it blessed a lot of people and it certainly it certainly blessed us. So thank you. Thank you for sharing such an important lesson because humility and, and just being humble and, and vulnerable, as you said, just there's so many good traits that are that you're sharing with with a lot of owners, especially new restaurant owners. They feel like that 
they, they, they must have a front. They must need to know everything. Otherwise, you're not a business owner. And I think like that's really far from the truth because yeah, baloney. I don't know who who wrote the rule that says, hey, now that you own your own business, you know everything. But <laughs> somehow that message societally or in our own heads, it comes through. Right. And we're like, oh, man, well, I'm the, I'm the person in charge. So I better I better act like it. Like I better show them that that I merit or warrant being in this position. And the reality is there's 63 dozen people in this city who deserve to be in the position I'm in, right? Like, like there's so many people who could run this place and there's so many. And so I think just this understanding, it's the same thing I feel when I'm driving past a guy in the street asking me for money, you know, who's, I'm like, man, I'm one lucky breakaway from being that guy. That's just the truth. I'm one one mentor away, one decision away, one one thing in my life where like I had something that he didn't have and, and two roads split in the wood, that could be me on the side of the road. So I, I feel that way in, in both in both ways and, and, and it's true. You're you're right. people run a restaurant or they or they get they get put in charge. Maybe they're just a manager of a few people and they and there's this falsehood in our head that says we have to know what to do. That's not true. There's no, there's no rule book suddenly where you got all the answers. You don't have them. I don't have them. And the person running that business down the road, he doesn't have them. We're all just trying to figure it out. And saying that out loud has been a learning step for me and an important growth step. Which is, so, and if you met our team, you'd get it. Like they're so talented. Like they come alongside and lift us up and support us in ways that, like I said, community college wasn't my idea. Camp Canlis wasn't my idea. Like very few of this was my idea, right? This is the team saying, "Hey, let's let's put our heads together. We can do this together." And yeah, it's been encouraging to watch them watch them do it. I love that. Two things for takeaway: it's just like, yo, don't be afraid to ask for help, and honestly, just be authentic. So, thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I know after the community college and after that whole thing, you guys now started. Yort Village. Yeah. Now, tell me a little bit more about Yort Village because that's another big achievement on your part. I'm like, holy crap, how? It looks beautiful. Cool. No, it looks really good. I'm stoked how it came out. I didn't think it would look that cool. It's We're all kind of in love with it. We're all sort of like, oh man, we just had to take this down. But it's in our parking lot. Yeah. Um, you built a village on top, of, like it's like a five star resort hotel ish kind of deal that you built in your parking lot. It's insane. How? <laughs> So the first step was, um, I don't know if you remember, so we threw this party a while back and we ended up building these huge two tiki huts for it. We're like, man, we need some tiki huts. The restaurant's not big enough. And it was January, it was New Year's Eve, right? So we're like, yes. how, how is it gonna feel like Hawaii? You know, it's 38 <laughs> degrees out and sleeting outside. So we ended up with these two tiki huts. Well, we fell in love with those. Like these guys built them for us and they just did an amazing job. So we picked them up with a crane and we stuck them, we moved them into our lower parking lot and kind of became like some of the culture of this restaurant. It's where we party as a staff and hang out. And for a while we've always said, wouldn't it be cool if we could use those in the winter? Like we could just turn these into yurts. Um, and then at the same time, I, Will Gadara, who who used to own 11 Madison Park, he built a yurt village. Sorry, who was this? Will Gadara. He and well, Daniel Hume ran 11 Madison in New York City. and. Um, it was part of Made Nice and, and all that stuff. Um, anyway, they did that in, in Aspen and we saw it and we're like, oh, that's brilliant. That's genius. So um, we partnered with Will and we just said, how'd you guys do this? He's like, well, the, the, the move is to get a big sponsor on board. So Will called American Express um, and he saw the writing on the wall. He's like, hey, it's not just you. All these restaurants are going to be hard up when the cold weather comes. Um, and so he got American Express to sort of do this for a dozen or so different restaurants around the country. Um, and so they foot the bill. Um, they gave us, wrote us a check so that we could go buy a bunch of yurts and put that thing together. Um, and we just wanted to make it, we were like, all right, well, if we're going to do yurts, they got to be canless yurts. Like it's got to be the canless of yurts, you know, whatever that means. So we just tried to, to run that to ground a little bit and be like, okay, well, if, if now we're the canless of years. <laughs> what does that look like? So we had a lot of fun with it. The staff and I went up, we got some forest passes uh, from the forest service and we went um, snowshoeing into the woods. We brought down a bunch of trees and we just started to decorate this thing. And 
um, and it came together. We got the snowboard and ski museum to give us a bunch of old stuff. REI came on board and they're like, hey, we do outdoor gear. Um, let's, let's put you guys in, you know, parkas and stuff because you're just freezing outside, right? So, um, and you're out there a long time. So it just sort of came together. We just started having fun with it. And, uh, and, and then, and then we did it again for Camp Canlos. So we just stripped it all down. Uh, th- I mean, I was away. I took, I took some time off recently and I came back and now there's a pond. They built a pond in the parking lot. So now you come in and everything is grass and um, they got this huge rock. So now there's a the rowboat, all these canoes, there's like a rowboat sitting in a pond in the Yurt Village. By the way, this is like just built on asphalt, right? So uh, <laughs> the idea I think is just if we're really, if we can be considered, if fine dining is like the most considered kind of dining, then what if you just take that that laser beam that you got, that consideration laser beam, and you, and you point it at camp, like, it's the same move, right? If we're paying attention to the plates and the silver and the stems and the way it all comes together um, with a bunch of different ingredients, it's the same move when you're looking at getting an old camp pennant and some old backpacks and a canoe and trying to make it feel special, right? So, so uh, like, actually, I, I do have so much questions about the Yurt Village. Like, you guys did that. Um, you make it sound like a breeze. You're like, hey, you know what? Just call my friend up. Saw it. They did a great job. Let's just call Amex and, and have them front the bill. And let's just build something and build a whole whole thing. Like, yeah. how, like that was crazy. Like, it's how long did that take you guys to build? And, like, what's the what's the process? If yeah. someone wants to be able to do that in a smaller scale, what would you recommend? Real time, that's like three weeks of, of planning. Um, and probably outside of that, it's seven weeks, 10 weeks of sort of thinking it through. Um, obviously, like the, the most important time in there is, is up in here. It's not with the hammer and the nails. Um, it's designing it so that it feels right. Um, I won't lie to you. We're really good at that. Um, we also have just a lot of we just try to surround ourselves with like some, some wicked smart people and, um, and we, and we collect them. (laughs) We just like, you meet someone who you just, your heart connects to and you know, they're talented. You got to promote the shit out of that person. You got to grab them and pay them what they're worth and bring them on board and just be like, Hey, you're a champion. And, um, and we're surrounded like Canlis is the story of a hundred different champions with a hundred different stories who have put this place together time and time again. And um, that's our staff and that's external too. Um, and so I could list name after name after name. Uh, like, I'd love to tell you that I built that. Nope. <laughs> like so many talented people in this community kind of came together. So many different little companies. The yurts themselves are a 120 year old company in Seattle that started building tents for the Alaskan gold rush. We're like, all right, I know nothing about yurts, but I bet they do. They've been building tents for a hundred years, right? So. They came on board and like, here, here's how you do this, right? So it was just a collaboration of, um, I think the best of this city or a lot of, you know, a lot of talent that we have around us. And we're really fortunate. We live in an amazing town. So you start to look around and just say, who could build this with us? So artists and all kinds of folks. Quick, like how does the business side of it make sense? Like that's a lot of bill that you need to front. Like it's. Is there a range of, of cost that would be that you can share? Yeah. Um, so that's the magic of having American Express on board, right? Is that um, you have to, and this is the genius of Will, right? It, it, like, it's not like he has some, um, he's not coercing or manipulating. He's creating something that works for two different parties. He's saying to American Express, I see your need. That's Will's genius. Is he sees a company like them and says, you guys have needs too you have needs. And then I see a bunch of restaurants and they have needs. And I bet if we sew this thing right, um, we can stitch a really, a really cool relationship together. Right. So American Express needs to be in with restaurants. They're trying to win on the game where you, you pull out your card and they give you points and you don't use your visa. Right. And so if we can partner with them, if we can serve American Express and say, cool, um, you're trying to, you're trying to do this and we can help you. We're really good at this. If you can use the same consideration that you would serve a guest with and serve American Express, well, maybe you can create a partnership there, right? So that's Will's genius, right? So he comes along and, um, and they say, yeah, we really wanna, 
We want to partner with good restaurants that's helpful for our image. We've got money behind this thing. So um, I think bringing on partners in that, we don't do it very often at the restaurant, but I think that's a real strategic advantage. The key there is that it, it's not, um, you're not coercing, you're not manipulating. Um, if you're in a partnership that doesn't truly serve the other person, take it to dating. If you're in a partnership that doesn't truly serve the other person, hey, you gotta get out of that. You know what I'm saying? Like a great dating relationship is one where where it just it it just blesses the other, like in in a way where the um, the sum is greater than the than the parts, right? And so, if we know that to be true in dating or in marriage, well, why would it not be true in business? I think sometimes in business we get tempted to think, oh man, you just gotta like put your best foot forward and make the pitch and make the sell. Man, those are all anti-relational expressions, right? Like, wait a second, like business is about relationship. So if you want to partner with someone, man, do the work up here and in here to say, how, how would, how would Canlis coming alongside this company really bless and serve that company? How would, how could I be good for you? And if they're doing the same thing, Wow, that's a really that's a really cool thing you can you can build some cool stuff that way so i love that that's i think like that's what a lot of people need to understand is like when you partner get sponsors collaborations it's all about being able to provide value and being able to understand like what is it in a, a what would establish a win-win situation for for both parties uh yeah. and a, a big part of that a lot of people mistaken is that it's it all comes back down to the values right like i think canlis you guys represent something of a very high tier and that's why like Amex, they'll be like, okay, you know what? It makes sense for us to partner up with you. But for our listeners or like people who are just starting out a year, two years into the to the game, like don't be discouraged of the fact that you can't partner up with Amex. No, it's not the case. It's about partnering up with brands that can both uplift each other's status yeah. and just build each other up like that. You know, can, can you build something more beautiful by yourself? Or if you brought someone on board, like, so I, yeah, if you start small in that way, uh, I think collaborations got really cool. Everyone wants to put two brands and a little X in between them. Like that doesn't, just because you put the two things together doesn't mean you created anything. So you gotta do the work up here to say, okay, what would really be beautiful here if we, if we brought these two things? No different than cooking, right? Just because you have two ingredients doesn't mean you have a, a, a recipe. <laughs> so there's a lot of work to do to say, what's beautiful about bringing these things together? In which ways can we do that? that that um, could really ignite something, and so anyway, that's how we built the village. Um, we had we had a lot of help, and and we, and I won't lie to you, we worked our asses off to do like like. That's Brian and I out there, hours and hours and hours, drawing it out in chalk, um, hand forming the path. Um, I cut those trees down. I put them up with my team. Like you can't just say to someone, "Go get a beautiful tree." you got to choose what a beautiful tree is. And you got to know that this tree goes here at the entryway and that tree goes over there. So we do that by hand. Um, we're, we're here hours and hours and hours building that by hand. That's, that's how you make something beautiful. I think so. that's so cool because you gave the best analogy, which I've never thought of. It's like, hey, you know what? Your laser focus with fine dining, pivoting and really focusing on the experience of the yurt village and, and there's just so much wisdom to how you treat your food and how you do yeah. things that translates into the experience for your customers. So that's really something that I, I'm learning a lot from, from that conversation. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And you guys had Eddie Bauer to sponsor your uniforms. How, how did that come about? Uh, we went after someone else, <laughs> let's be honest with you. And they were like, oh, who we'd partner with in the past. And they were like, oh man, cool guys, love you, but it doesn't work for us right now. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh shoot, we need you guys. And then um, I, somebody from Andy Bauer came in and we just started talking about what, what was going on. And we said, would you be willing? And they said, yeah, we would love to be on board. So let us just, we, and you know, retail went through this crazy ride, right? And so they were like, man, you know, First retail has too much clothing and then they can't make any clothing and then they like, and then it's all stuck in ships. Like retail has been all over the map. And so they just said, hey, we got some stuff. Um, we'll, let us hook you up. And um, we're set, and I, Brian actually, I remember him saying on the phone, he's like, this is really generous of you guys. I wanna make sure it's working for you. Like prove to me why, like 
I don't understand, like we didn't understand why this would be so good for them. And they're like, well, here's what we've got going on from a marketing perspective. Here's our relationship to Seattle right now. Like, so it really is, um, it'd be easy to take the free park and run, but um, we, I think if it's a relationship, you gotta, all relationships take work. <laughs> That's just, again, I don't know if I'm talking about dating or business right now, but like, <laughs> talking about both, right? There's no difference in um, what we do personally and, and what we do with the business. At least that's not how we run it. So we want them to be the same. But yeah, it was um, it was really cool. Uh, they came on board and they re and they did it again for Camp Canlo. So you should see the crew. They got these amazing like boots and these like they all look like forest rangers basically. <laughs> patches on their arms and um, it just makes it fun, you know. And and you get your team having fun. The guest is gonna feel that. You can't not. You can smell it from a hundred feet away when it when a team is into what they're doing and believes what they're doing and they're and they're enjoying what being out there with one another. Part of that is being warm. Part of that is looking cool. It, that that stuff matters, right? So you can't just throw a, something on the plate and pretend like the thing is done. It, like you got to take it all the way to the nth detail. So for us, I think we've learned that lesson. Like the fine diningness, like what made whatever that is these days. Right? So <laughs> a lot of different opinions, right? But whatever that is, that laser focus, that's not just a fine dining thing. Like that's either a part of your brand or it isn't. That's either a part of your character as a company or it isn't. Either you care at that level or you don't. And you gotta have the courage to, to own say it. that out loud. Just, just own yep. it, just yep. be authentic to, to who you truly are. And I think something that you shared with me, um, like for those of you, us that's listening, it's like, yo, I want that Amix, um, I, I want that Bill Gates, I want that Eddie Bauer. It, it all comes back down to being authentic and really being able to, to invest in the relationships. and. And it takes years like you guys took 70 years to build your brand name so a lot of people can't just come in and expect the same um and it's something that we just all need to learn from um being authentic it's, and true you uh, too right like the like we're the relationships we're closest to the those are the people you trust but it's no different with business right so we have the ability of saying hey we're gonna do something cool maybe to amex or maybe these other partners we worked with and they look at you and they're like yeah sure you are bud Right, like, hey kid, sure you do something cool. And hey, also, it'd just be good for all the people listening. We get turned down all the time. Okay, so that would be good to know also. Like, we're the, we're the person in the bar who's like, hey, and she's like, no. So there's a lot of companies that come to us and I'll be like, no, this is gonna be amazing. And they'd be like, eh, is it? So, but with someone like Eddie Bauer, we were like, hey, we're gonna build something cool. We, you could just look up online the last eight ideas we did this pandemic and you could do the math yourself. Trust me, there won't be anything better going on in this country at this moment. Like, come on, believe in us, right? And um, and they trust us. They trust us because for 70 years we have been a part of the city or because we've earned that trust over time. That's, that's essentially what you're spending in those relationships. You're earning and building trust and then you're spending it. You're asking someone to say, believe in me, trust in me and they're going to look at you and they're going to decide whether or not and so i i, I do think that that's um that gets missed that gets yep. underplayed it's yeah and roles. actually thank you yeah. thank you for sharing the fact that you do get a lot of no's because it's like from from afar it just feels like yeah. that you you know everyone and it's like hey you know what i get this 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 and that it's all easy like it's no. so You're much to like admit the no's that we're always getting the canvas crash and burn journal would be a great read like it like it's embarrassing like like it's 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 endearing um we get said no to all the time all the time and it's it's a lot of humble pie i would be totally honest it's like oh man okay hold on a second um cool i mean we lost 11 james beard awards before we won one you know what i mean like it's like okay i thought i was thought it was there but maybe not and um and I, and it's i'll be totally honest i wouldn't have said this at the time but we need that we all need that we all need to remember like okay i got work to do here and it's on me to earn it someone's not eating in my restaurant that's on me you know we were 10 years ago or so uh, the restaurant was really slow like 2007 2008 the economy's in a hard way people aren't showing up right this place is just feels like a ghost town we're doing on a slow night, 20, 30 guests, 40 guests, because we're a big restaurant. That's just, we're losing money. And I got really angry. And 
I was just like, oh man, we're working so hard. I believe this is still a really good dining experience, you know? And someone said to me, it was like, hey, if someone's not eating in your restaurant, that's not on them. <laughs> like that's on you. So like maybe take all that anger and turn it around a little bit. Like take all that frustration. Like I am quick to point the finger like, ah. But honestly, I was like, wait a second. I needed to look inside and say, wait a second, no. We can do a better job. Maybe I need to change my attitude a little bit here. If my restaurant's empty, that's on me. I can't be angry at them for not appreciating. If I think something's beautiful, no one else thinks something's beautiful, that's not their fault, right? If I paint a painting and nobody wants to buy it, that's on me, right? So like, I really had to to turn that around. Like we, we've been a slow restaurant before. We've been empty, we've been rejected. And I, and I wouldn't want someone to look at Canlis and say, oh yeah, it just comes easy for them. It's like, no, <laughs> we can talk all day long about um, it not going well. So, Thank you for sharing the true side of, and the adversity um, of, of what you go through, because it, that's very encouraging for a lot of people, because, you know, it's like, it seems like a very uh, short term game for people who who are in it for the first year, two years, three years, and they're hitting walls all the time. And yet they forget when they look at you guys, it's 70 years of hard freaking work of trial and error. That into a wall. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's like, wow. And it's people forget that and they, they, oh, they get like, it's, it's, it's super encouraging. Here's a little so, secret. Will, Will Gadara's dad used to tell him all the time, adversity is a terrible thing to waste. I'd love that statement, right? Like you're running a new restaurant and you just feel like you just feel like you're hitting wall after wall after wall and that you're not making any progress, you know, two steps forward, three steps back, baloney. Those three steps back are valuable. Like that adversity is valuable. It is honing and refining um, what it is about you that you like and the things that you want to shed. It's teaching you incredible lessons. So that adversity, I mean, the amount of negative press Candace has got or bad reviews, man, those things shaped us. They woke us up and we all need that. I don't care who you are, but we, we need that. We need someone to say, you know, hold on a second. Sorry, man. I was interrupting you. What were you? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is exactly, I think, like why, why we we're going on this interview. And thank you so much for sharing and, and for all your time and and just yeah. diving deep and, and sharing this with us because it's so important for us to all hear that. We gotta be talking about, and if we're not talking about this, it's just fluff, right? It's like, yeah. and I think honestly, if there's anything post pandemic, I think people are over it. <laughs> I think when we talk about the way that we move forward societally, um, there's a lot of stuff we don't wanna go back to. There's a normal that we don't wanna return to. And, um, and, and we, I was having this conversation with an editor last night about writing stuff. And he's like, you got to write this for millennials. And I'd be like, don't dumb down millennials. Everyone talks about how to speak to them. They're over the pitch. Like they're over the, <laughs> like, just be real. Like just straight up be real. So if we're not talking about the brokenness as leaders, if we're not honest with what's messed up about us, like sure, you can stand on the hill and say charge, but you also need to sit down with your people and be like, look guys, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what's, this is what I thought I would change this year and I didn't. Here are the goals I didn't accomplish. Like, here's the me that I want to be and I'm still not yet. And is that okay? Do you have space and margin for me to spend another year trying to grow or trying to learn or trying to become that person, right? It takes both. And I feel like I'm hoping as we, as we rebuild the restaurant industry, as we come out of this particular season that we're in and into a new one, I hope we remember those lessons and we say, hey, hold on a second. We have a real opportunity to build something from scratch right now, our own industry. Let's build it the way we want it. Let's build it the way that's sustainable for our people. Let's build it in a way that we can be truly proud of. It's, I would not have wished a pandemic on anyone, but it's the perfect opportunity for rebuilding, right? It's the perfect opportunity for stripping away the things that, that we don't like about our company or our industry or ourselves and starting new. So that's, that's kind of how we've been seeing this. It's like, hey, it's, COVID's not great for fine dining, but it's great for being creative. It's great for new starts. It's great for um, kicking an, a bad habit or a system that we didn't have the courage to break down earlier. 
maybe now we have the courage. Maybe we use a pandemic to just have that be the thing that allows us to to start new. So I really hope as we as we come out of this season that that's what we're able to do. And, and we're looking at some of that stuff internally. Uh, we just changed the way we pay our people. Um, it's so stinking expensive in this town. And we just finally said minimum wage is not enough. That's hard. I'm going to have to charge more. So all the guests that are coming to Canvas, that's, uh, I'm going to have to charge for that, right? And we just changed the way we do healthcare in here. It's like, I don't want to go back to the way we did it before. So I, I'm, yeah, we're, we're having to take a good hard look at our own systems. And, and man, what a great opportunity to do that right now. If we all got extra time on our hands. We're not open, right? So like, use it. A pandemic is a perfect opportunity. All that time on your hands. It's a great opportunity to be learning about, you know, what we can do better with. I, I, I like that reflection. I, I like that. Um, I know for a fact that you guys are focused on camp canless in the summertime, opening up in May. What's the big plans on that? Do you have a plug? Sell us on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sell us on your vision. So here's the deal. So we, we have, it's two parts. We open the first part, um, which is the fine dining part. The, that's, that's the camp. They look a lot like the yurts. They are the yurts. Um, but the whole thing has been re-envisioned and it's beautiful. Uh, it sold out real quick. Um, we put, we have a roof. We like, hey, pandemic's a great opportunity to use a roof. Um, we put a tree fort kind of thing up there. It sold out in 90 seconds, um, two months of it. So um, we're really privileged to not have to open right away. Um, so the reopening of Canlis, we can delay until we're really comfortable bringing fine dining back and bringing people in in the right way. Um, so we may extend this again. We're about to, like you said, we're about to open the canteen. So we have two parking lots. So one is we've got a yurt village in it. The other one, we just want to do barbecue. So Celeste, um, she's been our executive. She's our CDC executive sous chef before that. She's a champion. She's from Lubbock, Texas. And I love barbecue and she like crushes it. So we just bought a smoker. Well, I'm like, Celeste, let's do this. So she orders this crazy smoker on a trailer and we're picking it up with a crane and we're going to drop it down next to those tiki huts. And we're just going to do like a, like a Texas, you know, ice house, you know, highway 99 smoke shack kind of thing. So we call it the canteen. It's like the, the casual part of camp canless. So, but the tree fort and the canteen and camp canless and the yurts, um, I think that can sustain us until we can open up, you know, good old fashioned canless again. So I, it's so cool. Like every time I'm, I'm so caught up with everything that you do, like, I'm like, you are having new stuff all the time. So I, I can't wait to actually come and try out camp canvas when yeah, everything yeah, opens up. It's uh, super fun. Uh, it sounds like it. Uh, I definitely will definitely come, uh, check it out. Um, cool. so any last words for, for our listeners or our audience? Like, do you have anything you want to share? You know, we've hit on so many things. Um, I think, um, yeah, I think I think I would just I, here's the thing. I think we're tired. Mm. Be good to say that um, our, our crew is tired. We got some some change fatigue. We've got some we got all of that. Uh, we're feeling all of that. And as a team, um, I think it's good to say that out loud. And also, I just feel like if we got to go another round, we're going to go another round. And if we got to go another round after that, we're going to do that. That's not because we're superhuman. I think that's just a choice. And I don't think it's a pandemic thing. I think it's a function of, of our character. And so I would just invite, and let's see, I'm, I'm looking in the mirror right now. I'm literally looking at my face in the Zoom screen. So I'm not preaching here. Um, but I, th what I'm hoping is that that's a part of my character. And what I'm hoping is that that can become a part of Canlis's character. And really that it's the character of the restaurant industry. Like this is our, this is our mantle to grab right now. And, and I think people need hospitality more now than they ever did. And, and, and we've taken our licks as an industry. We have, this has not been easy, right? Like we've taken, we have taken our licks, um, but we're not down. We're not out. We're just, we're just tired. We're a little beat up. Um, but I think of us as the industry with the most promise ahead of us. Um, and I'm filled with hope for that. And I see the people that are committed to real hospitality who are like, I'm not giving up pandemic, whatever I'm in. Right. And, and that's inspiring. And so, and like, to me, that's, that's what's in front of us. And so I would just 
name and claim kind of that hope like hey guys that's right around the corner and i don't know how many rounds it's going to take but but we're going to hold on and we're going to we're going to we're going to hang in there or we're going to die trying i've got this sticky on my down to my office down there but like in fact it's right there yeah and and at some point i was like so frustrated i was like so down um just discouraged and scared and like ah we're like (laughs) losing money and we're like the whole thing right we've all felt this in the pandemic you just had these low moments and i wrote this thing and i was like we're gonna keep doing this or we're gonna die trying so i wrote die trying on the yellow sticky green and i stuck and i just i kept moving that thing like around the office and i would find it and it was like such an encourage so that's how i felt it was like i'm in i'm in or, or or we're just gonna go down doing something that we believe in and i don't care if you're a restaurant person or not i think to find something that you can just be all in in and be like, hey, this is me. So find something that you believe in and go with it. And and that's what we've been doing for 13 months and we're gonna be 14, whatever month we're in right now, and we're gonna keep doing it. So I hope I hope that someone looks at Camelus and can, can be encouraged. Um, it's the story of a bunch of normal people just doing this and or gonna die trying and it's it's not um it's, it's not anything more glamorous than that you know what's really funny is like while you're giving me that speech i'm like holy crap like i'm all r- riled up i'm like oh i'm ready i don't know what I'm, what I'm ready for but i'm ready like what am i doing i'm ready <laughs> let's do this let's i don't do know it. how to do it We're but what am go. i doing it's, it's friday up. it's friday i'm about to go home it's like what am i doing i don't know <laughs> I'm, I'm ready <laughs> you're, you're spreading the good word and so thank you for that <laughs> no thank, thank you. you thank yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you i appreciate you i appreciate for um for people that want to follow your journey um do you have a plug let let us know how they can find you yeah it's um uh my brother runs our instagram at let's see i don't know what's our instagram at at canlis at beak at canlis i don't know i'm supposed to know i'll put it in the show notes i'll put it in the show notes (laughs) i don't know what our instagram is he does it all but i (laughs) edit his work i'm like no man that's not what you say so he like takes the photos and i'm like i would say it this way and he's like that's not what the kids do anyway it's a conversation we're on instagram you can follow us on instagram i don't know how to do that i'll put on the uh in the show notes uh, but thank you thank you so much for your time i i truly truly appreciate this because you're sharing so much so many years of wisdom um and just the philosophy is just so different from the people that are just starting out and it's just like we we know how to mirror off what the, the people that are at the pinnacle at their trade are doing. And it's something that we can really learn from. So thank you. Thank you for doing so much for the industry as well. Happy to. Thanks for, thanks for telling our story. Seriously. I hope you guys are well up there. Stay safe. Take care.